idiot, at five seconds, the velocity would be negative 32 times 5. Is that what we had before? Yeah, negative. Stressful, <laughs> stressful job I have here. Negative 160, again, feet per second. Same exact thing, same sign even. By the way, how would you get speed from this? This is a velocity, how do you get speed? So what's the speed here? 160 feet per second. So speed doesn't have a direction, velocity does. So if you get a, a question that says, what's the, ab or what's the instantaneous speed? Well, you just take your absolute value of your instantaneous velocity and you'll get the speed. It's just the magnitude <coughs> of, uh, of that vector, not, that's not the direction. So how can velocity be measured in negative and positive? Up, positive. Oh, up and down. Okay. Down, okay. negative. Climbing, falling. Okay. Rockets have a positive velocity when they're climbing and a negative velocity when they're falling. This was a van thrown off a cliff, 500 foot cliff. He had negative velocity. <laughs> That's what happened. True story. True. Okay. Uh, last thing in our little section here, there's another connection I need to make for you. Uh, you, already, you already know that this calculus stuff is pretty intriguing because we've just found out that the slope of a curve at a point is the same thing as instantaneous velocity, right? So we find out the same way, which is kind of cool. The other thing we're going to find out is something about rates of change. Rate of change. You know, we normally say that what is our rate of change? For instance, if I give you a straight line like this, what is the rate of change? What do we call that? Slope. Slope. Well, not to, it is a straight line already, right? So the straight line can't have a tangent to it. Well, unless you, it can't have a tangent to it. I'm not going to consider that to be a tangent. The straight line is itself has a, I'm sorry, in and of itself has a rate of change, and we call that rate of change slope. We say we're going up two and over one, right? We're going up one or, and over five, going down and all that stuff, that's a rate of change. So slope is a rate of change. Just a, a basic example here. What's the rate of change? Why would you say 3 over 1? He's right. Why would you say 3 over 1? That's a slope. slope is a rate of change. So the rate of change is 3 over 1. How about for this one? What's the rate of change there? Sure, negative one of one if you want to say one, or just negative one would be the rate of change. All right, here's what this says to us. Here's the jump we can make. Well, if slope is a rate of change, and we know that, well, if you look at this, velocity is a rate, right? The rate of change here instantaneously was, well, the slope of a curve at a point. And that's what we're saying here. If we want to find an instant rate of change for a curve, that's just the slope of the curve. A rate of change is a slope, right? If we want to find the slope of a curve, that's instantaneous rate of change. And that's what we're saying. So since a rate of change is a slope, an instantaneous rate of change is the slope of a curve at a point. Of course, we need to make it a little bit more mathy than that. Here's the mathy part of it. 
As you know, very quick, as you can see, it's exactly the same thing that we've just been doing, okay? Here's a rate of change. <coughs> This would be considered your average rate of change. Average rate of change is exactly like this. It will be that. Why that? Isn't that also a secant? Secant. In other words, it is the what between two points? The distance. Not the distance. Distance forms is not square root two. Average. It's the average, that's why it says average, sure, but what does this formula give you? Oh, come on, we spent so much time doing that. What's that formula? Difference quotient. Difference quotient gives you what? The tangent. The, not, not the tangent, but the slope of the tangent, yes. So what is this? This is just slope, right? That's just slope between two points. That's what we're saying. The rate of change is a slope. The rate of change is a slope. That's an average rate of change. How I find the instantaneous rate of change is do what to this thing? Add a limit. Put a limit on the front. As h approaches what? Zero. Zero. Yeah. So that's how we're going from an average rate of change to an instantaneous. Are you starting to see that every one of these things is almost identical? Average is just a slope. Okay. Instantaneous is the limit of that slope. It's saying find it at a point. That's all we're that's all we're doing. So if this is the average rate of change. The instantaneous rate of change is identical to an instantaneous velocity. It's identical to the slope of a curve at a point. It is a limit as h approaches 0 of the slope. It says, what's the slope as you approach one point? That's it. Now, is it acceptable to solve, say, uh, say we want instantaneous velocity to first work out our slope of our secant? And then just once we have that all worked out, then just add the limit to it and solve that way? Definitely not. Because your slope of a secant is going to be an actual num numerical value, right? Like 5. When you take the limit of 5, it's always 5. So what, what you're saying is, what, what you'd be implying there is this question. Or well, maybe I'm saying it the wrong way. Here's the question you're, you're implying. Is the slope between those two points, which is your average slope, your average rate of change, understand? Is this slope the same as this slope? Possibly. What about this slope? No. What about this slope, that slope, that slope, that slope? No, 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 no. So no, you can't just do the average rate of change and say, oh, this is also an instantaneous rate of change, I'm taking a limit. You can't do that. What you can do is say, I'm going to consider my slope function and then make the h go to zero. And that's, ch that's a different way of saying it. Okay, that's what I would do. Kind of like on the test, we could figure out, solve for, get rid of the h on the bottom, and then do, add in our limit once we've had it all simplified down, and then solve the limit. Yeah, that's exactly what you're doing here. Okay. That's, that's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not going to do this problem for you, but I would like to set up, just talk about it a little bit. Let's say that I have uh, oh, a problem to find the average and the instantaneous rates of change of a, of a curve. Average, I'd like that over 2 comma 5. And the instantaneous at a point of negative 2. Can you explain to me maybe a little critical thinking here? Why am I giving you a range of numbers for the average, but I'm only giving you, I'm actually giving endpoints for the average, but I'm only giving you one number for the instantaneous? Why is that? Oh, well, it's not technically at one point. But over, over such a small distance that it, we consider it to be one point, right? So what we want to know here is average is over, yeah, it's over a distance of time, right? It's over distance and a time. We're saying compare the distance to this overall elapsed time. How much time elapses in an instant? Pretty close to zero. That's why I give you only one point here. So could you do both of these things with this information? 
We're just going to talk about it. I'm not going to do it for you because I've already given like five examples of the same thing. Here's how you do the average. In our case, our average, our starting spot would be, what's our x sub 0 for this case? That's where you start. How much is your h? Why, why is it 3? Good. So in our case right here, x sub 0 would be 2 h would be 3 because that's the distance, that's the elapsed time that it took. That would be 2, that would be 3. Are you okay on the average, average rate of change for that one? You plug in the 2 because that's where you started. You plug in the 3 because that's how long it took you. You would calculate that and you plug it into your function. We've done all this stuff before. You take your 5, you take your 2 and divide by 3. You plug in your 5 to your function. Plug in your 2 to your function, then you figure that out and divide by 3. Can you follow that? You sure? All right. Do I need to do it for you, or are you okay? Okay. That was not an answer. <laughs> <laughs> Silence. Yes, no? No. You all right? Yeah. You want to see it? Good. I don't want to do it anyway. Forget you guys. Whatever. Plug in 5, plug in the 2. What do you get when you plug in 5? 71? What do you get when you plug in 2? 8. Over 3, 71 minus 8. That would be your average rate of change for that one. That's how you figure it out. Plug in the 5, plug in the 2 to your function. I plugged in right here. Then divide by your h. That's average. I'm definitely not going to show you the instantaneous right now because we've just done that. For instantaneous, again, you have two options. Your x sub 0 would be negative 2, so you could find negative 2 plus h, f of negative 2. Then do your limit, right? Or you could just do this with your function and then plug the number in later. We just did that example right here. We did that twice. I showed you how to plug in the number, and I showed you how to not plug in the number and do it later. That's the same exact problem right there. How many people feel okay with, with this one? Good deal. Now, we're going to...